SGF Lawal Lampoons Oshibajo says he's a corny pretender who Satan has exposed to failure. Hello everyone, you welcome to the news. Engineer Babashir David Lawal, the former secretary to the government of the Federation, has taken Professor Yemi Oshibajo, the vice president, to the cleaners and washed him down to be a corny pretender with ungodly ambition. Babasha, in an interview with TG News, said all the while he tried to resist the temptation of joining in on the Yemi's political discourse. First, because he was one of his only two bosses while he was secretary to the government of the Federation. Secondly, because like him, he's a Christian and a pastor to boot. All, the All Progressive Congress APC founding member, despite Singh praised the vice president to be a man with the gift of a gab, an eloquent politician who carries along everywhere in his hands an iPad to convey the impression that he's a modern man, a tech savvy man, and to crown it all, he wears an owl cap. Besides, who does who on earth does not know that he's an owl in law? The truth is that the man is a cunning pretender with ungodly ambitions, Lawal said. According to him, Nigerians should not make mistakes in supporting his political ambition in 2023. Lawal, in a statement made available to, to TG News, said, But in deciding to challenge Tinumbu in a presidential duel, the devil has Oshibajo finally trapped. The devil has exposed him to failure, shame, and ridicule. The devil is extracting his price, and it is going to be a very high price on him. The PDP press call him the poster boy of the Buhari government, but they refuse to tell him that posters last only until the next heavy rain. Let me tell a little known story as far back as 2010. As at the 2011 election season was approaching, the then CPC reached out to ACN with a view to working out a sort of merger or alliance for the pending 2011 election. After a series of meetings between the leadership of the parties, it became apparent that the chemistry was not right at that level because the desired results were not forthcoming. So. One of my friends, also a Buhari loyalist, and I sat down to review the situation in light of the fact that time was running out. That friend of mine is still alive and serving in the presidency. To our minds then, the main issue was the challenges of a Muslim-Muslim ticket, especially as Buhari was at the time considered a no-no in the Christian communities. In order to address this challenge, my friend and I approached Sinumbu with a proposal that he should nominate a loyal Christian as running mate to Buhari. We emphasize the word loyal because Buhari had earlier indicated that he will only seek for one term and no more. Therefore, the proposed VP2 should be one that would agree to serve for only one term and then clear the way for Tinumbu to run for the presidency. Tinumbu agreed to consider this proposal and gave us a date to return for his decision after consultations. On our return, on the date promised, he gave us the name of Professor Oshibajo. I was aghast because I had prayed and hoped that he would nominate either his wife or my friend Kayo Defiemi, both of whom we know to be very young, brilliant, hard-working Christians from large denominations. All through the night, we had tried to dissuade Tinumbo from this choice, but he stuck to his guns, insisting that he can trust even his own life to this man, Oshibajo. Besides, he consistently argued that it would not be decent and proper to nominate his wife, especially if he was to seek to be president immediately after her own tenure. In the end, of course, another person was preferred by Buhari. CPC, then, we proceeded to lose the 2011 election. But when another opportunity came up in 2015, Tinumbu had no hesitation in renominating Oshibajo to the post. Now, this is the same Tinumbu that Oshibajo's Hatchet men are denigrating with his ardent concurrence. There is God, though. Surely it is the devil that has tricked Oshibajo into doing this most inglorious act of our time that will number him among the most ungrateful serial betrayer of all time. The consequence of this wicked exposure of the blind ambition will follow him and many generations of his children long after he must have gone. Such a pity. Mark my words. Nigerians are yet to know the reasons why the president took away all the social investment programs from his office and handed them over to a little-known woman that had no prior working experience. 
and we are yet to know the reasons why he is no more assigned serious duties since the president's recovery from illness. All these and more will begin to come out after 29 May 2023. Then the true understanding of who this man truly is will come. Then he will be left standing alone or fairer as if naked in a market place with no more trader money. Kai, Satan is wicked. When Judas Iscariot behaved similarly, he went and hanged himself. Still, that extreme act of remorse could not absolve him from history's most severe judgment. Was, Jud was Judas also physically challenged? And so was Zac um, Zacchaeus and Eve was no betrayal? Oh God, have mercy on my former ogre, for he does not know what he is doing. It is pride, greed and ingratitude that has overtaken him. Also, please God, forgive those who have nudged him onto this evil, ignoble cost due to their own self-interest. Dear God, it is not too late to repent. You are a God of second chance. If he does repent, who knows, we might be able to persuade the president to send him to the AUG as a replacement to his former boss, Teslim, or even to the United Nations as Nigeria's permanent rep. These are the places where his Dogon Turasi might serve him well and where he can enjoy his trader money unmolested instead of wasting it on delegates that will not vote for him anyway. Kai, Satan is truly very wicked and you don't trap my, my, my boss. So these are the words. You can see it's an epistle um, said by Babashir Lawal, the former secretary um, to the government of the Federation. He has exposed, well, in his own terms, what the relationship was and how the first chose one person as a running mate previously when they were CPC. That, of course, though he didn't mention the name, um, is Pastor Tuni Bakari, who was Mohamed Buhari's running mate. Then, come 2014, they now had to pick another running mate and they had to concede to Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, whom Ashiwajibala had met in Umbo, had once nominated, but that was refused. So now, if what he's saying is true, then, you know, there are some people that will know the truth, actually. And people have been saying it. Everybody knows, it's obvious that Tinumbu was a major stakeholder. In fact, it was the person that nominated Yemi Oshibajo and said he even trusted him with his life. Wow. So with this level of trust, if it's, it's so, well, maybe those who are calling it betrayal are correct. Maybe or maybe not. Now, some people are thinking, okay, Tinubu may have truly nominated him, but what would have gone, you know, wrong along the way? In a relationship between a godfather and a godson, and a period of eight years, a lot of things might have transpired that we do not know. Because sometimes the fact that we help somebody to get to a particular point does not mean the person doesn't have his or her life anymore. It has to do with relationship management. And when it becomes politics, then it's a different ball game altogether. So, or are we saying Baba Shara uh, Lawal has spoken too much? Because, as he said, he is also a Christian. But this SGC is also a Christian, and um, he's also a pastor in waiting, kind of. So, are we saying he has spoken too much, or are we saying maybe he's jealous of Oshibajo? These questions are many questions. Are the questions popping up after Baba Shara Lawal has come out to talk about the? how Yemi Oshibajo came out. I mean, if you remember, days ago, when Yosh uh, Yemi Oshibajo was talking about how he became the vice president and how he was selected, he did not mention Bola Ahmed Tinubu's name. He mentioned Rauf Arabeshola's name as the person who called him, right? And so he and um, Arabeshola and the Bikule Amusu were the ones that now went to Abuja to meet the um, the top members of the crew. He never mentioned Bola Tinubu. And honestly, this was quite shocking. And one of the people that have come out was um, Shea Usani, who queried and asked that whatever might have happened between both of them, that is um, VP, Yemi Oshibajo and Bola Tinubu, must be something very, very serious. Because everybody knew what or that Bola Metinubu was the one who single-handedly nominated Yemi Oshibajo in 2014. These are interesting times in these in, in our political arena in Nigeria. What's your opinion about all this going on and what Babashio Ahmed, I'm um, sorry, Babashio Lawala has spoken? Please drop your comments in the comment section below. In all of this, I'm saying God bless Nigeria. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next news. Bye for now.